Welcome to Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya, and now more than ever. I'm Jeff Koenig. Now, all this week, as we've been telling you, it's all about the women personalities of radio. And my guest today is one of the most controversial presenters who have ever graced the airwaves. She's taking a hiatus from radio right now, but she was on the air, and she's been on the air everywhere from Nation FM to KISS to Capital to Royal Media's Hot 97. She has done it all. She will admit that she's been hired and fired and rehired. So obviously, there is talent there. And she will tell us why she got fired and how controversial a radio presenter can be. How far do they have to go? in order to make an impact. My guest today has been called everything from the queen of radio to the cesspool. She's none other than Cess Mutumbi. <laughs> you could have left out the cesspool bit. <laughs> no, you know, that one, that one just lends you itself. Just, you, you think? It lends itself. It was cess in the pool, not cesspool. <laughs> Cess. You made a huge impact in radio, and obviously I'm not, I'm not talking the past like that, but, and I know you will come back, but when you were on the air, people listened because they never knew what Cess was going to say next. Is that, was that intentional? Of course. I mean, how boring is life, Jeff, without a little spice? And I believe my radio career was exciting even for me. I get bored very easily, Jeff with people, places, things. So I assume people also get bored as well. So if I can entertain myself, then I'm sure you're getting entertained. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But one man's meat says is another man's poison. No, don't worry. I haven't done poison yet. <laughs> <laughs> My meat's been the meat for a lot of other people. And I think, um, for me, what I enjoyed most about my radio pers persona or the personality that we coined back in the day at Nation with um, Bob Kyoko was that Bob asked me, what kind of a personality do you want to be? And I said, I don't want to be any kind of a personality, Bob. I just want to be myself. So I told him, okay, be yourself. And he asked me, so who are you? And I said, wait and find out. And I guess it's taken years, but um, voila, yeah. here I am. And, and this cess is the, is the same cess that's on the radio, right? There's no, there's no Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde sort of thing. Mm, yes, there are two sides to the coin, Jeff. I'm very old-fashioned in a lot of ways. And that's, I think that's been the reason why a lot of my content has been so, not controversial, but really provocative. Because sometimes I like to just provoke the old school. Sometimes people really... They live the kind of a life that isn't realistic. I'm old-fashioned, like I, I believe in the dating process. I believe in courtship. I don't believe a woman should openly ask a man for a physical liaison, for example. I think that's extremely, for lack of a word, let me leave it hanging. <laughs> so sweet. Yeah, I believe in, um, I'm a spiritual woman. I believe in God. I pray a lot. I'm from a very staunch Catholic family. I've got very strong family ties. I believe a man should be the provider. I mean, this whole thing of the independent woman, where did it come from? Of course, apart from the song, by Destiny's Child, which everyone took totally out of context. It was a generation which I think um, misunderstood things. So there is a flip side to Ses Mutungi. In my house, I love to cook. I'm an excellent cook. That's what I did in... Um, Pinata University. Uh, that's my degree, home economics. And um, I am quiet. How did you stumble into this business, Sess? Oh, Bob Kyoko thought I was a great entertainment at the bar. <laughs> We're sitting at a bar and having a great time. It was um, just friends gathering to meet. And I've always been an entertainer since I was in school. I was a cheerleader, I was in the drama club, I was head of the Fourth Form Debating Society. I've always been a frontline person. And Bob just thought it was time. 
if he could harness that, what I have, and put it on radio. He thought it would make great entertainment, and he was absolutely correct. And then you worked for uh, NT, what, I'm sorry, uh, Nation FM for a while. Yes. And then Kiss Game Calling. Actually, I, I started off at Kiss. I was doing voiceovers. And you won't believe who gave me the opportunity. Go on. Ndinda. <laughs> Caroline Dinda Motoko, she is just a woman I have a lot of respect for. I don't think there's a woman in radio who has worked that hard and who deserves where she is today. Oh, Caroline works like a Maasai donkey. She's amazing. She's work, work, work. And I think when people see her out of that light, I don't think they can appreciate her as well as they should. So she's the one who actually gave me an opportunity to do voiceovers at KISS. So she introduced me to Roy Karuize, and I went in, and they loved my voice, and they would call me for voiceovers. And then um, Nation, that's when now Bob found me, and they offered me a job. I'd been calling Nation for three years before that. So it wasn't like, yeah, okay. I just angukiad. No, I didn't. And then? And then um, I told uh, John Wilkins at the time that I have gotten an offer from uh, Nation FM, I'd really, really like you to keep me at KISS. Oh, and John Wilkins said, no, we don't have space. And I thought, <laughs> fine, it's going to be like that, huh? Locked. So I went to Nation, and seven months into Nation, um, Patrick Kwaku um, gave me a call and asked whether I'd like to come to KISS. And I told him I had made Cyril Nabutola a promise that I'd be with Nation for two years. So until my contract expires, I will be with Nation. And I think it was important for me to be there because I was green. I wasn't ready for what I then found was the life of a media presenter. So I, I was born uh, into radio with, Rob, with uh, Bob Kyoko. And it was, it was exciting. It was scary because one day I was at home and the next day I was on radio. Just like that. No training Bob told me training is on the job. And it was a very rich experience for me. Yes, it was. And then, okay, so after two years, went back to KISS? After two years, I went to KISS, and it was because of one of my, actually my radio mentor, Maina Kageni. Mm. I don't think there's a man alive, apart from you, of course, Jeff, <laughs> who has had such an impact on what I have become today. You'd be very surprised, Jeff, that when you were on KTN with your little pinky ring, I used to watch you on news. You're kidding me. Oh, yeah. I thought you were well, pretty good looking, too. Hello. <laughs> and um, I just remember now thinking that you were so ahead of your time. You know, it was a pity that Kenyans weren't ready for you then. But you had a great impact, and I followed your career throughout um, CNN and I just thought, and I still think you're phenomenal. Okay, but obviously Minor made you, or helped make you bigger than life, and you were bigger than life, says. Yes, I was. So big that when you <laughs> left KISS, well, we're not going to go into that, but left KISS and went to Capital. Yes. Nobody, everybody was fair game. Yeah, and I had ratings during the period that I wasn't on air. And you... <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, statement? Yeah, people still thought that I was on air, and you know, they... They still gave me a rating or two, uh, which I, I really thank um, Mashabik for. <laughs> Mashabik. All right, you know. let's go straight to where, you know, where you hit the brick wall. You know, obviously, you know, we're talking about the no sacred car. Everyone was game out there. Yeah. And one day you went after Moheshimiwa, Charity Gilo, who happens to be a relative of yours. Yes. You went after her. Okay, I wouldn't say went after her. It was an article in the paper which was detailing the curriculum vitae of most of our honorable members of parliament. So in the paper review, I think I, I ran with it too much. It's just that I think at the time I was surprised to find out that a lot of the members of parliament weren't really like George Saitoti, you know, professors and stuff like that. And um, in retrospect now, Jeff, Chris Kirubi did give me a chance to apologize, and um, 
I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know whether I didn't apologize because I didn't want to, or because I thought I didn't need to. But now, when I think about it, the the learning or the lesson in that, when they say in Swahili, "You have funds of for me, it was people work so hard. Jeff. They come from so far down, and they struggle to make it in life. And in Kenya, it's quite difficult, especially for a woman. And for me to try and cut down someone like Charity Ngilu at the knees, I mean, I thought to myself, Jeff, the audacity. I mean, I, I later thought about it, and I thought, how could I possibly have even taken such a pot shot? At the time, it was fun. At the time, it was fun. But when you, when you look at it, I was supposed to be somebody that a lot of people listen to, look up to, and here I am taking down the only or the first woman who ran for president in our country. I thought it was despicable. So looking back, you actually regret this? I do regret it because at the time, I didn't know better. I can say that now. So if you had to do it again, you would have done it differently? Of course I would. Actually, I wouldn't have done the paper review at all. <laughs> I'd have just um, skipped the paper and done another paper. <laughs> and I think um, Charity Ngilu is an exceptional woman. She's... Wow. I mean, I, I wouldn't really know where to where to give credit because her life in itself is a credit to women. And I look up to her a lot. Right. So when Chris Kirby showed you the door, did you think, you know what, maybe I had become too big for my boots no. or, or my, my sandals and um, I need you know, time to recollect? No, Jeff, that is the, that's the funniest part. I didn't think that. I thought, well, you know. How dare you? No, I just thought, I mean, what's the big deal? But like I said, now in retrospect, I understand where Chris Kirubi was coming from. Because Mr. Kirubi himself has come from humble backgrounds. And he's the only man I know who's referred to as a tycoon. Oh, he's an exceptional businessman. And also, he's one of my favorite employers in radio. I learned a lot from Chris, especially about dealing with people. And I learned how to respect people. And that, I think, was my biggest learning in radio ever. It came from that moment when Chris came in and he was upset. Oh, he was upset. Oh, he was upset. And I think that, in a way, opened my eyes to see people differently. Wow. It, was, it was a lesson in respecting people respecting how hard people work, and also respecting where people have reached. I mean, I had no right to think I could take a pot shot at Charity Ngilu, whether it was jokingly or not. But you would take pot shots at other people throughout. I mean, why, you know, this one wasn't any different. I think because Mr. Kirubi and uh, Mashimu Ngilu, at the time, and I think even still, they work very closely together, which was the Ministry of Health. Um, Mr. Kirubi has a lot of things. He contributes a lot. He, they were working very closely together. So, so it was a low blow. It was a low blow, and I really wish I had some inside information, but I wasn't privy. Yeah. And even if I hadn't been privy, Jeff, yeah. it just wasn't the right thing to do. So, so I want to talk more about that. And also, what Ses Mutungi thinks of radio or broadcasting in general today. I'm sure you listen to a lot of radio, you watch a lot of TV. What are your thoughts? And also, the future. I know you don't rule Ses Mutungi out, or you rule her out at your own peril, right? That's what they say. <laughs> That's we'll true. Take a break. My guest today. You can either call her the drama queen of radio or the cesspool. Either way, she has learned her lesson and she says <laughs> she wants to move on. She has so much to contribute in this business and don't rule her out. Or if you do, do it at your peril. You can only get that kind of information right here on Capital Talk only on K24. Don't go away. We are back in a moment. <laughs> This week, it's the women personalities of radio. You asked for it, you are getting it, and it doesn't come any better than my guest today. None other than Sis Mutungi. <laughs> we could go on and on with that name. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you, you have to get off the cesspool bit. You know, you, you need to calm down on that. <laughs> that is, you can call me Cecilia. No. no you know, I mean, like, really. 
Okay, let's leave it at that. <laughs> so listen, you must listen to a lot of radio these days or watch a lot of TV. And obviously, you know, you, your blood is still in there. You, you, you know, you have a passion for this industry. What do you think of, of the broadcasting industry these days? Actually, I don't listen to radio these days at all. And um, the reason I don't listen to radio is because there's nothing to learn from it. I enjoy listening to the new music, which doesn't really affect me because I'm an 80s baby. So I'd rather do, you know, listen to classic, you know, when for the music. But I think in terms of content, um, radio has changed in terms of content. People are not, um, they're not, I wouldn't say not addressing issues, but they're not addressing them intelligently with wit, with a little bit of humor. So it's a difficult pill to swallow. They're not adding the little sugar coating to it, which allows the pill to go down smoother on hard, some hard issues. And I think also we are focusing on things which are not important. Back in my day when I was doing radio, it's not that long ago, but um, self-improvement, self Concentrating on self in a society which judges you the way it does. It's important that people feel that they can fit in. And the reason why people like myself stand out is because of values and principles. So if you want to stand out, that's one thing. But if you want to fit in, then you have to understand how the community clockwork works. So, so the question is, if Cess was to get an opportunity to, to get back in radio, would you or would you prefer TV? Actually, Jeff, the job I want is yours. <laughs> you got to be kidding. I want your job. I want to do exactly what you're doing. You want to be on the bench? Well, a little more space wouldn't hurt between me and my subject. <laughs> <laughs> but this is nice and cozy. There you go. And um, the, Yeah, now. <laughs> I think um, for me, if I was asked to go back to radio, I wouldn't. Actually, there are only two people who can ask me to go back to radio, and even then, they would be asking me for, I believe, a progressive reason, and that would be Maina Kageni and Chris Kirubi. And I think, so far, no. no. But for me, maybe next year, I'm thinking about doing what you're doing. Reason being, I'm good with people, Jeff. I mean, I'm good with you. And, and there's a lot of room for these kinds of shows, Cess. I mean, not just the bench, but there are, there's so much room because Kenyans are hungry for information. Mm -hmm. Kenyans want to know about people and places and things. And there's a lot of room. I mean, you can do this very easily. I think I can. I just really think it's um, about the right opportunity to start with and um, the right place. And also, I need to have the ability to... Decide content. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be told to discuss something which I think is irrelevant. And I'd want a little mix of the Oprah and the Jerry Springer. Oh, the dramas. Oh, Jeff, without the drama. What is life without the drama? You know, a punch here and a, a little insult there. Yeah. People sulking over here. You know. You like that kind of stuff? I don't like it, Jeff. That's part of life. When you have an interview with somebody and there's no emotion... You don't provoke anything. It's dry. So you leave the listener feeling like, but this is supposed to be the person who has done and has achieved. Is there nothing more to their life than just the bland? Yeah. You like a little spice, huh? Spice is important. Yeah. And I think that's why you invited me. Oh, spice is crucial, Jeff. All right, so, so it says, obviously, when you were at the peak of your game, right, did you think, I'm untouchable, no one can touch me right now? Is that how you felt? I never had that feeling because I've always been in the limelight. I've always been well known. Fame didn't come, it didn't affect me in that way. Fame affected me in the sense that I made the wrong choice of friends. I made the wrong choices in terms of the friends that I chose. Fame didn't affect me in the sense that I got a big head, I thought I was... It arrived. No, 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 no. No, so, I, I, okay, so let me ask you this then. Um, what do they tell you now? Obviously, you go to places and, and, and you know you hang out and people say, hey, sis, why aren't you on the radio anymore? Or, you know, we miss you on the radio. Or, you know, I'm sure they tell you all kinds of things because you're approachable kind of person. But what do you tell them? I tell them, Sykes, it's because of people like you that I became the 
radio personality that I am today. Without, of course, my mashabik, my supporters, my fans, my listeners, I wouldn't have become Ses Mutungi. And of course, the appreciation of my controversial acts was also something which uh, I think they took very well. And they still write about you in Pulse, in Nairobi oh. Star. You're still a... Uh... Jeff, I sell papers. I'm telling you, if people know that I'm in a paper, yeah. it is sold out by 11 o'clock. I'm telling you, Jeff. Because people want to know, yeah. so what is Ses Mutungi up to? Mm. You know? Yeah. And sometimes it's, um, it's, been, it's, it's been difficult in terms of that aspect because I don't have a private life. When I date, men are intimidated by me because they think they'll sit with me. And then the next thing they know, they're in the pulse, which sometimes is true. You know, you can't even give me a lift, Jeff, <laughs> without you being in the papers. Yeah. Yeah. And I think in that sense, I'm glad to be out of radio because I'm looking forward to a more serious profile. I would like, um, I want to be married, Jeff. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Not on this show. Not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be married. I want um. I want a nice husband, you know, a handsome, good-looking guy, great booty, you know. Um, he, he didn't say that on TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I could repeat it as a great body. <laughs> and a man who will be my partner for life, somebody who will understand that, yes, that was a phase in my life. But now I want to move on to other things. But, but you know, Patrick Kwaku and I, I have to come back to him because he, he, he told mine up your favorite. He said, look, when the day people stop talking about you, it's the day it's all over. Yes. So it applies to you. They still talk about you nine months after you've been out of this business. They still talk about Ses Mutungi. Jeff, I don't think I'll ever be over because I think I'm a normal person. I live a normal life. And I think the more they dramatized my my existence, the more they put me in the papers, the more people realize Ses is just a normal woman who's just having a rough life <laughs> you know the things that they do yeah. sometimes people do what I have done but in excess mm. and because I'm a public figure it's I'm under this I'm under the spotlight yeah. and I think the reason why I have people who understand me people who hate me people who love me is because I'm a normal human being and there's no facade Jeff you won't meet me today and I'll be different mm. No. But people always say, also say that be careful what you wish for because you may just get it. You wish for fame. You got the fame. You have to live with it. Actually, I didn't wish. Oh, yes. well, Actually, you know what, Jeff? Getting into radio was a mistake. I was actually interviewed for TV. And then Bob Kyoko nicked me, him and Tony Patty. <laughs> you know, they took me into radio while I was waiting for an opportunity to be in television. So you're going to blame Bob now? No, I'm not going to blame Bob. I mean, it was it was probably the best thing because I think radio has been a stepping stone for me. I've learned a lot. I have coined my persona. Yeah. Now I know who I am. I'm more confident. And if I was to do a talk show like yours, the one we're on today, right. I think people would respond to me differently now as opposed to if I had started off. Because I find news anchors lack the kind of oomph and the persona that radio personalities have the opportunity to present. Yeah. When you listen to somebody, you understand their opinions. When you're given something to read, you really have no opinion of your own. So that's something that I realized later on would not have gone well for me. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's been good, I think. But I didn't wish for fame, Jeff. I've always been famous. And I, I'm not saying this in a conceited way. I've always been known. Since Loretta Musongari, I was in all the little operas, you know, Oliver Twist, <laughs> Sound of Music. I can see you there too. Food, glorious food. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I went to school, I was a cheerleader, I was always, you know, yeah. in, the, in the limelight. Yeah. So it's, um, it's not the fame that I wanted, Jeff. I think what I wanted was the friends. I wanted the, the acknowledgement and especially... I wanted to prove things, maybe maybe to my family, maybe to just people. Yeah. And I think that's why. Obviously, there are a lot of young women looking at watching this program tonight, today, and they're wondering, you know what, I love, I love what this woman has done, and I would love to be like her, because, you know, she seems so grounded, and she seems like she really knows what she wants in life. What do you tell them? 
I would tell them exactly what you said. Be careful what you wish for. You might actually get it. Sometimes you might wish for something thinking that it's going to better you. It's going to launch you to new heights. It's going to change you. It's going to provide a feeling for the emptiness that you're trying to fill. But it, everything comes with its own challenges, Jeff, as you would know. And you need to be very careful, especially with the media. Oh, media is a fickle friend, as such is fame as well. Because you can go into it, Jeff, as a good person. And you really want to go in there and change the world. It's like politics. You want to go in there and change the world. But when you get there, the situation isn't as you thought it would be. And there are a lot of other elements which come into play, like egos, people you're working with, um, corporates, politics, you know. If you're good, people might not want you to get to the top as fast or faster than they have. So I would tell the young people, or the young women especially, who want to get into media, be clear about what you want to do. Do not imitate somebody else. A copy is never as good as the original. And copies never survive the original. That's why copies are put in safes and vaults, and originals are passed around by small delivery people. Be the original. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Because if you can't be yourself as a replica, the original will always take precedent over you. So go in there, be bold, stand your ground, be respectful, something I've learned. Respect people, respect achievement, discipline. You cannot serve more than one master in media. It's very time consuming and be prepared to make the biggest sacrifice of your life, which is your personal life. I mean, Jeff, how many people in the media, you're lucky you got married when you did, because a lot of women in the media now are looking for partners, and men are afraid of women in the media, because they think they're like... Larger than life. Yes, and you know, there's nothing as bad, Jeff, as being with a man who has achieved. He feels he's really worked hard, he's at the top of his game, and then every time you walk into a function, it's like, oh, that's Cess's dude. That's Cess's husband. That's Cess's boyfriend. You're never Jeff's wife. You're never Jeff's girlfriend. You're always Cess's. And that does a lot to erode the ego of your man. And then he starts trying to prove his manhood in other ways, which then destroy your relationship. So you need to be very clear. The sacrifice that you make to be where... I am or to be where Caroline or Minor or anybody who's top five is that you will have to sacrifice something in your personal life. It's very sound advice, my dear, and very wise as well. Thank you so much, Ses Mutogi. Good job. Well done. <laughs> what do I get a peck? <laughs> Good Lord, this woman doesn't hold anything back. Ses Mutogi. The drama queen of radio. She says... Don't rule her out. She also gives some very sound advice, especially to the young. Be careful what you wish for, because you may just get it. And if you do get it, be prepared for just about anything, especially sacrificing your personal lives. But if you do indeed make it, know that the sky is no doubt the limit. No doubt. All I can say about Sesame Tungi is stay tuned. And you can only get that kind of information, these kinds of guests, right here on Capital Talk, only on the award-winning station K24, where we are all Kenyans. Yes. All the time? Did I get it right? All the time. <laughs>